Hi, hello, and welcome to this episode of Geography Girl. Today is a bit of an icky sticky one. We've heard of AI being this futuristic and slightly terrifying tool to optimise solutions to human problems. But what if we looked to our elders for wisdom? Fungi has been around the block for longer than any other kingdom, diverging from other life around 1.5 billion years ago, and is the animal kingdom's closest relative. For an organism that doesn't have a brain, it is incredibly intelligent. It's aware of its environment and responds accordingly, becoming masters of survival. Fungi are remarkable chemists, producing molecules that even humans can't reproduce in the lab, and have provided an essential life force to allow land plants to spread and the Earth's ecosystems to flourish. So it's no wonder that we would look to them for inspiration. The Physarium Polycilophallum, aka the many headed slime, has been used around the world to solve spatial design problems. This is a plasmodial, single celled organism that grows outwards, forming intricate networks and searching for food choices. Slime mold has natural algorithmic abilities. They avoid unnecessary complexity and so has inspired researchers and urban planners to do away with their man-made algorithms and look to slime to design transport networks and urban layouts. By observing the paths formed by slime mold, planners can identify optional routes for roads, railways and other infrastructure, ensuring they are both cost-effective and resilient. The mold is so intelligent that it will optimise killing off more laborious routes to food, leaving only the most effective routes to food source nodes. They can help us to manage natural disasters and congestions, as slime works naturally provide alternative routes in case of blockages. So let's take a look at these slime molds in action. In 2010, researchers at the University of Hokkaido in Japan carefully arranged pieces of oatmeal in a petri dish to represent the railway stations of Tokyo's immense subway system, and then allowed the slime mould to do its thing. The resulting network was strikingly similar to the real thing and sparked the emergence of what we now know as biologically inspired adaptive network design. Similar research projects have been undertaken in cities like Sydney and Mexico City, which has a city of over 10 million and incredible congestion. And this experiment shed light on the development opportunities for transport and utility networks. Since then, the slime has mapped the optimum transportation routes of numerous cities, as well as the Silk Road and full global trade routes. The Silk Road was a network of trade routes that connected East Asia and the Mediterranean, linking trade hubs like Zinan, Baghdad and Constantinople, and facilitated cultural, commercial and technology exchanges for centuries. An analysis of historical trade routes wanting to understand how and why this crucial route had maintained the flow of trade, even when routes were disruptive, to highlight key pathways for the flow of goods and information, and to offer new perspective on potential trade paths. The research helped us to understand how the Silk Road maintained its functionality, despite challenges like political instability, natural disasters and shifting trade dynamics, and how the flow of cultural, technological and ideological exchanges took place along the Silk Road. In a number of experiments, Professor Andrew Adamaski used the slime to compare the motorway networks of 14 countries, finding that Belgium, Canada and China had the most efficient and the US and across Africa having the least efficient. As well as transport, this method has been used in urban growth models to understand how cities might grow and where new infrastructure, like the electrical grid, might be needed. This sphere has opened up research into biologically inspired algorithms, being used in computer simulations to optimise urban layouts and balance traffic flow, accessibility and the environmental impact. The mould is such a useful method as it grows at a very rapid one centimetre an hour. Even better, the researchers can use salt to simulate a road crash or flooding. Salt is toxic to the plasmodium and will cause the organism to retract and strengthen and open up new routes across the network. Up until now, research has not included types of terrain such as rivers or mountains, nor understanding of any social or political factors in the model. 
However, this could be integrated in the future, as current research suggests that mould actually chemically marks unsuccessful roots. There is also potential to map regularly occurring events, such as rush hours. This was discovered when researchers repeatedly exposed the mould to dry air and low temperatures, which are, as you would know, unfavourable conditions for slime to grow in. The growth rates slow, and even when poor conditions were alleviated, applying that implying that the slime was anticipating this kind of stimulus. To highlight the importance of our slimy friends, one of the researchers in Tokyo, Raphael Key, says, humans aren't the only ones dealing with the challenge of designing efficient, resilient networks. In architecture school, we were taught by human architects the lessons of past human architecture. But the slime mould has been shaped by hundreds of millions of years of evolution. So in that sense, they are far more experienced at solving certain architectural problems than we humans ever could be. So that's it for today's episode. It is a bit of a shorter one, but I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.